Is your partner not on board with decluttering? And no matter what you've tried, maybe you've had multiple conversations, you've asked your partner until you're blue in the face and they don't get it. And meanwhile, their excess stuff and their clutter is everywhere, stressing you out and frustrating you. And you just wish they were on board to make your life easier and your home tidier. Well, look no further because today we're gonna be covering five concrete ideas to help get your partner on board. And I promise you, you probably haven't done a lot of these things. If we haven't met yet, I'm Katie Wells. I'm a declutter expert and host of the Maximized Minimalist podcast, which is a top-rated podcast. And through that show, this YouTube channel, and my online programs, I have helped thousands of families successfully declutter and keep it that way. So are you ready to dive into some ways to get your partner on board? Okay, I'm excited for this one because my husband was not on board for many years until I did these five things, okay? So number one is to share your big why with them. Your big why, in a nutshell, is your purpose for wanting a decluttered home or decluttered garage if you're focusing on a particular space. Why do you want that? First of all, that's important for you to know because this purpose is going to help drive you when you wake up some days and you simply don't feel like decluttering your home. It is more than a wish. It's more than a goal. It's your purpose for wanting that decluttered home. So why are you doing this? Yes, it's great to have a tidier home. Your home will feel better. It'll look better aesthetically, but what is the deeper meaning behind it? Are you doing this for your mental health? Are you doing this for your stress levels? Are you doing this so you have time to spend time with your partner or your kids instead of just picking up stuff 24 seven and feeling resentful and frustrated? So think about and write it down. Why are you doing this? And share that with your partner. A lot of times our partners don't understand the what, which in this case is decluttering, if they don't understand the why behind it. And that goes into number two. When you're having this conversation, make sure to have it at a time when you are not triggered and upset and when you're in the heat of emotion or frustration, when you walk through the house and you are triggered by stuff, save it, take a deep breath, save the conversation for later in the night or another time when you can whew, take a breather and come at it with less emotion. And when you have that conversation with them, share what's in it for them. Oftentimes we forget to share what's in it for them. We're telling them, I want you to declutter your stuff and they're thinking, what's in it for me? I don't wanna spend time doing this. I don't wanna get rid of all my stuff stuff. What's in it for me? Okay. And so if they are financially motivated, you can make money from selling some of this stuff. Maybe you will start spending less money as you declutter because we need to work on our inflow of things as much as we work on our outflow of things to so start thinking about them. What motivates your partner? Do they do chores? Do they help around the house often? Maybe they do the bulk of the chores, whether that's cooking dinner, raising kids, whatever that is. Regardless, did you know that decluttering your home can actually save Save you up to 40% of time each and every single week in doing chores. So paint the picture for them. What will they do with that extra time? Will they do stuff they want to do? Will you do stuff together as a family? Maybe you take a date night or do something fun. <laughs> what a concept, right? What's in it for them? If you notice that they get stressed by the mess, the cluttered countertops, the toys all over the floor, even just having less stress in their life, I think a lot of us would be interested in taking a little action and spending time decluttering, knowing that on the back end when we're at home, getting home from work or spending time at home any part of the day, we will feel better and we'll actually enjoy being in our home. So I want you to start thinking about that and weave that into the conversation. Number three is to lead by example. This is huge. It's easy to tell people you should do this because I say so, but if we're not getting rid of our own things and handling our own clutter, which let's face it, everyone's got their own clutter, it's going to be a lot harder to get our family, our partner, or our kids on board. So be congruent and aligned with what you are saying. You shared your big why with them, your purpose of having an uncluttered home, yet if you don't tackle your closet or your clothes or your shoes or your purses or whatever it is that you tend to covet and not want to let go of, they probably won't be taking you seriously. So do your part first. Likely they will see that you mean business when you start letting go of some of your own stuff that in the past has been hard for you to let go of. Number four, show them really practical ways they can get this done. One thing we've put in our home that has been a game changer for this is to have a permanent donation bin. We have a permanent donation bin inside our garage. The lid is off and it acts as an invitation to be filled up. And it is a constant reminder every time we pull into our garage at the end of the day, what else can I declutter to 
today. And because that donation bin is there, it serves as a not only a reminder to let go of things, but it is the designated spot for when we know we are done with something, we don't need it anymore, the kids have outgrown it, when kids aren't interested in it, whatever that item is, it is our designated spot for that stuff to go. Think about it. A lot of us don't get rid of things because there's not an easy go-to place to put it. It's, yeah, I know I don't need this right now, or that top doesn't fit right, or this toy doesn't get played with, but I don't have time to like go get a trash bag and go spend 15 minutes decluttering. If you have a permanent donation bin in your home, it's the go-to spot. So I showed my husband and my kids, here's a donation bin when you are done with something and you don't need it anymore, it goes directly in here and walk them to it. Leave it in your garage or in a closet or in a space that makes sense in your home. It has been life-changing. Another great thing to do is to offer to do it with them. If you are watching my YouTube videos or listening to my podcast or getting different declutter resources so you can learn and add tools to your toolbox, if you will, and uh, sharpen your sword and get better at decluttering, it doesn't mean they know anything of what you've learned. So sometimes just offering to do it with them and spend five to 10 minutes a few times a week going through some big clutter hotspots for them. Maybe that's the top of their office desk at home. Maybe that's their entryway. Maybe that's some space in the garage or their workbench or something like that. It can be overwhelming for people who don't feel like they have the tools to do it, right? The tools that belong, that live in between our ears and our brains. So if you can help motivate them and nudge them with the tools you have, oftentimes that will be enough to tip them over and get them to let go. Number five, this might be the most difficult one, yet most important, is to be committed no matter what their answer is. You want a decluttered home, you have amazing reasons for it, you deserve a decluttered home and to love the space you live in. And I think for all of us to understand that this is not a flash in the pan system, this is a lifestyle, you get out what you put in. Here's what's really cool, by the way, about when you identify your big why and your purpose, is that the how becomes so much easier, where you used to see roadblocks and used to get stuck in your declutter process, oftentimes you breeze right past those so much more simply. And remember, decluttering doesn't have to be so difficult and so overwhelming. So if you need help getting started, make sure to click the video nearby to help you get past that overwhelm.